Thank you so much for joining us here on Mountain Lake PBS for this, the world television premiere of Heart's Delight, the story of William H. Minor, a remarkable man, um, obviously did not lack for work ethic, and uh, this is just a remarkable story, Jen. I'm Bill McColgan from Mountain Lake PBS alongside Jen Kowalczyk, and we're very pleased to have you join us. Thank you so much for being here. You know, we are thrilled to bring this story to you, and it's and it's only possible when people like you watching at home decide to make the move to become a member of Mountain Lake PBS. We are only able to bring stories like Heart's Delight, like Mountain Lake Journal, like Curiously Adirondack, like so many stories, so many programs that we present to you all year round are only possible when you decide to become a member of this station. <coughs> Excuse me, it's so easy to do. You can pick up any of the thank you gifts that we have available for you tonight. They would make a wonderful gift for a friend or family member, maybe somebody who doesn't live in the area anymore but knows the William Minor name. But we have lots of ways for you to become a member. But the important thing is that you decide to become a member, become a supporter of Mountain Lake PBS by calling the number on your screen or visiting mountainlake.org. And we have so many ways to say thanks when you do. Well, and this is not possible. This kind of programming, this kind of kind of outreach, our mission serving this community and this region is not possible without your support. So please call the number on your screen. We're joined this evening by some wonderful friends from the Minor Institute, which was not would not have been possible without the work of William H. Minor and support from all kinds of people around the country and around the world. And we're not possible without your support. And we have volunteers here ready, waiting to take your call. So now is the time to call that number on your screen or give us a shout on mountainlake.org. William H. Minor enriched his community by providing funding for crucial projects. Right now, you have the chance to enrich our community as well by becoming a supporter of Mountain Lake PBS and helping us carry on our mission of providing the best educational, informative, and entertaining television available today. When you become a supporter of Mountain Lake PBS, we have some great ways that we'd like to thank you. For a contribution of $75, we'll be happy to thank you with the DVD of the film you're enjoying right now, Heart's Delight, the story of William H. Minor. This double-sided DVD contains the entire 86-minute film, plus the making of Heart's Delight, and over one hour of archival films from the 1920s on Shazy Rural School and the Heart's Delight Farm. When you support Mountain Lake PBS with a contribution of $84, we'll thank you with a DVD of Heart's Delight and a bonus DVD, A Place Out of Time, The Altona Flat Rock. This 30-minute documentary was produced by Paul Frederick 25 years ago about the unique geological history and ecosystem that exists at the site of William H. Miner's Million Dollar Dam. For your generous contribution of $150, we'll thank you with both DVDs and Dr. Joseph Burke's book, William H. Minor, The Man and the Myth. The book traces the life of the businessman, philanthropist, and visionary of the late 19th and early 20th centuries who proved the American mobility myth true, that success depends not on who you were, but on what you could do. Take a few minutes right now to support the station that brings you the proud history of the North Country and preserves this legacy for future generations. Call the number on your screen or visit mountainlake.org right now. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Tom Halleck with Mountain Lake PBS and we are so pleased to have Paul Frederick with us here tonight. He is the producer, director, and writer of this incredible documentary. I love that photograph that we see where you see all of the horse-drawn carriages <laughs> coming down the road and the farm is in the, the background. It just shows how spectacular mm -hmm. Hart's Delight is. As we saw in part two, he was making millions of dollars in the Midwest and then uh, they lost their only son, he and Alice, and that really is what got him thinking about coming back to the North Country. Yeah, we, there's no like um, letter specifically saying that, but the timing works out to where he had just recently been talking uh, in letters to his um, sister about possibly selling the property here that he had owned and once his child dies, it seems like things got thrown into f full gear about coming back here and starting the farm. So that's right around 1900 or so, 1902, 1903, that, they, 1903, 1903 yeah. that they moved back here. So they come back, originally, his aunt and uncle's farm was a, a few hundred acres. A couple buildings, uh, uh, the house. One of the things I think that's interesting about that farmhouse is he never tore it down. He 
built completely around it. That mansion <laughs> is built around Unbelievable. that house. So he just kept the nucleus of that farmhouse there, you know, and uh, I think, again, we think it's a return to his youth. So when he came back in 1903, he started buying up land and went to work almost right away for yeah. transforming that farm. Yeah, the first few years farm. there was, you know, relatively few buildings going up, but then after about the second or third year, it was just you know, steam ahead nonstop. I mean, eventually there was 300 buildings on the property that was from where the farm is now all the way to the lake and, uh, you know, 800 employees. It was just, it was just on a massive scale. He, he didn't do anything small. <laughs> and just things you would never think of on a farm at that time. I just. Uh, uh, yeah, you, I mean, you went down the list in the documentary, just uh, incredible. And electricity was a big thing because uh, th it wasn't around here. So if he wanted it electricity. It was the state capital in New York right, right. at the time, but he they had, had it in his barns at the before. minor farm. That's amazing. Yeah. So he had to develop not just the buildings in the farm, but also all the hydro systems and power to get it, get power to his farms. He started in the village of Shazy, building some small dams. And uh, it really ramps up, and I think the next section is coming up. We're coming gonna, up yeah. Because he realized he had to have water to supply those dams, and we're going to hear yep, about that yep. in part three, the construction of the reservoir, and that right. turned into what a behemoth project that turns into. Yeah, the rivers around here in the summer, it can get pretty, pretty almost dried up. Sure. So you need a large reservoir so you can release water to keep kind of a constant flow throughout the summer, and um, that was kind of what he was going to be building on the Altona Flat Rock, which I see as part of the DVD package that you it can is. get. And that was my first documentary I ever did, uh, 1990. And uh, we deal with that, uh, telling the story of the whole Flat Rock, but the Miner Dam is a big part of it. And the Flat Rock turned out not to be the best spot to no. try to build that <laughs> reservoir, as we'll find no, out. Yep, we'll it find did, that uh, out. There were a number of obstacles. You mentioned the number of employees there grew to 800. Uh, on the farm, and this is where the story gets personal for you. Your grandfather yeah, actually, uh, was one of those my employees. My grandfather, uh, Bernard Menard, was one of the first, uh, one of the employees there. And in that first documentary, I had the pleasure of being able to interview him about it. So, what did he do on the farm? Uh, he did a lot of construction. He, he was a construction guy. He did so. a lot of that. Yeah, around yeah. <laughs> but he talks about he, he kept busy. You know, it's funny. The parts he talked about was um, that if Miner ever saw anyone whip a, an animal they were fired on the spot so hmm. he was very he had his rules and if you have disobeyed the rules on the farm there was no second chance that was it you were done did he know minor was minor the type uh, of person who would know most of his employees no, even though he had I, hundreds I, I didn't get the sense that he ever met him personally so uh, I don't remember him saying that but he, in the North Country for that time period that would have been a fantastic job for yeah for, yeah for, for many sure. families yeah and you know uh, he just touched so many lives and employed so many people and he was strict he had rules uh, but he wanted that job so and he he really did care about the community i mean much of the the farm uh was not only uh, for him and to put out the products as, as we saw uh, just a couple of moments ago they they shipped products yeah. from from to, from I here to montreal to new york to chicago the finest restaurants and hotels and the underlying uh, theme of the show is this country life movement that um, everyone was fleeing the country and going to live in the cities. And Miner wanted to show that with some scientific advancements and some scientific study that you could make farming uh, very profitable and that uh, people wouldn't have to have their youth run away to the city. And that was the underlying idea behind the farm was to make it as a... Uh, a school as our a, showcase, a, a really. showcase, a demonstration farm, and but he got he got carried away. You know, he he made it so unobtainable that they'd come and other farmers would come there in the summer or on the weekends and see what was going on. But then they'd go home and they'd just do it the way they always did because they couldn't do it at that level. Or they didn't have the means. I mean, we right, saw that right. uh, the, one of the first farms to get electricity, one of the first farms to to install the. Uh, the, the drainage tiles uh, yeah, so that right. uh, the crop yields went up, but uh, probably a lot of other farmers at just that time just didn't have the means yeah. to be able to do that. But his intent was to try to help other farmers and help the community, as you said, to help yeah, uh, I think the those thing, living in, in, uh, in rural areas. Right, and if you look back at his whole life, it seems like William Miner was always concerned about the community. Uh, and, and it's amazing, he never 
put his name like when he built the school and he built the hospital which is coming up he didn't put his name on it William Minor school he didn't want credit he didn't want credit he uh, he's in very few pictures I think in the show there's maybe a dozen pictures that he's in I mean that's it there <laughs> he just wasn't about him it was about everything he was doing in the community and as you mentioned the farm grew and it expanded out uh, to have the the dams and the electricity for the farm he also started supplying electricity to the village to the of Shazy, yes. and uh, that, as you were mentioning, uh, that's the beginning of this huge project that we're going right. to uh, hear Come about on. in part three, where he, he wanted to, to have as much water as he could for those dams, and uh, was this one of those cases where he just bit off more than yeah, he I could chew? Yeah, I think so, and then he, got, he really got involved. It was a million dollar process back in 1911 to 1913. It, he got in so deep, his engineer said it wasn't going to work, but he was kind of of the mindset, I'm going to make it work. I sense there may have been a streak of stubbornness, yeah, perhaps, yeah, a I little bit so. as well, but <laughs> that'll be interesting to see. Now that's coming up in just a, a few moments, but for right now, let's go back over to Bill and Jen. All right, Tom, and thank you. And we are so pleased to have such a gifted and dedicated filmmaker like Paul Frederick in um, to share his thoughts on this wonderful piece of work. And I love just hearing Paul talk about if William Minor wanted to have electricity at his farm, he had to build it. So that's similar to what we're doing here. If you want to have community public television here in Plattsburgh, we have to build it. So thank you to everybody who's already made a call. We've heard the phone ringing lots of times. So continue to keep that phone ringing. We need to hear from you tonight to let us know that this is the kind of programming that you value here on your public television station. Inspire, enrich, engage. That is our motto. That could have been the motto of William H. Minor. <laughs> and uh, joining us now in the studio is uh, Roderick Giltz. Uh, Rod is uh, well known in our community um, uh, and uh, for a number of uh, charitable endeavors endeavors in the community um, but he is also a member of both the board of directors of the uh, minor institute and a founding chairman of the original foundation for CVPH the hospital f uh, which was would not have been possible without the dedication of William H minor and Rod is standing by right now with our own Paul Larson Thanks, Bill, and it's a pleasure to welcome mm -hmm. you, Rod, to our studio mm -hmm. tonight. And you are also the chairman of Northern Insurance Agency mm -hmm. here in Plattsburgh. We're watching this gorgeously produced documentary about William H. Minor, someone who is very important to you mm -hmm. in, in your philanthropy and in, in your mm -hmm. career. We're telling this regional story about William H. Minor. Why is that important that an entity such as Mountain Lake PBS tell this very local story? Well, I think, um, in recent years, the trustees at Minor Institute uh, supported staff in a um, outreach effort to the community. There's been a sign on the Northway for many years. Minor Institute existed, but, and it was open to the public, but there wasn't much presence of the public. We made a concerted effort to reach out to people to share the story and what a great benefit it is to the North Country when someone like Minor leaves a legacy such as this. And, and viewing the finished product now, the completed film, what's your opinion of it? Uh, blown away. Uh, what a great story and so, so well done by uh, the production of the, of the, I mean, I, I attended the opening night at the Strand and see that theater packed with this story and know that there'd been subsequent showings and it was also extremely well attended. Clearly people in this North Country want to know more about the man and the myth. In including yourself, you want to know more about William mm -hmm. H. Minor. What is it in his story that you relate to the most? I think it's the story of someone of great wealth who chose to make a strategic decision and perpetuate something in the future that would be a game changer for a community. And you can think of it in the Alice Minor Museum, in the Institute, in the hospital, institutions that wouldn't be here were it not for someone with a vision. He's really left his legacy here. You, you know quite a bit about CVPH having been um, the founding chairperson sure, of go. the foundation of CVPH. Mm -hmm. How is his legacy remaining at CVPH? Well, you just think of the growth of that institution today and the impact regionally uh, for healthcare in the North Country. Again, that wouldn't have been there. You think of that hospital when it was built and the commitment he made, it wouldn't have been there but for his vision. And we're also at Mountain Lake PBS, we're very grateful to you and your family mm -hmm. for having supported our programming through the years. Your name is attached to this program. Why has it been so important for you and your family to 
to promote Mountain League PBS programming and to help us stay uh, afloat? I think our family are strong believers in public broadcasting and the balance you bring to all kinds of stories, whether it's news stories or human interest stories or a story like this, where commercial television uh, and commercial radio take a different approach. Public broadcasting is a jewel we need to be sure in this country we never lose. Exactly, I, we appreciate <laughs> hearing that. This is really tonight, it's really community supporting community mm -hmm. because here we have local filmmaker Paul Frederick mm -hmm. making this regional story. Why do you think that's important that, that community members support what we're doing here? Well, you know, you, can, you have a choice with uh, support that you give to anything. Uh, whether you, uh, it's, I call it voluntary tax dollars. You can put your dollars in something you believe in instead of letting the government just make that decision. So I think everybody ought to, to the degree that it fits, decide if this is something we want to support. They, it makes a difference in the quality of programming that comes out of here if the community continues to support this institution. Yeah, well, we appreciate that very much. I'm looking forward to seeing more of the documentary. What else in the documentary do you really relate to? I, I, I think of the educational effort that today that uh, were developed as a result of everything Miner did. And I just tell a human interest story in connection when our air base was closing here. I was on a ski trip in Alta, Utah. Met a young man working for the federal government on base, air base and uh, military redevelopment efforts. And I asked where he got his, uh, his start, Miner Institute. He in, was in the environmental program at Miner Institute and that led into his job and what he was doing as a career. Oh, well, that, that is so nice to hear, mm -hmm. and I'm looking forward to learning more about William H. Minor. Right mm -hmm. now, we're going to go back to Bill and Jen. Great. Thank you, Rod, so much for being here tonight, and again, for your, your support through your, your family and your business. We couldn't do it without you. Just a quick moment to remind you of the thank you gifts that we have available when you make your call of support to Mountain Lake PBS tonight. For $75, you can receive the DVD of Heart's Delight, which is the program that we're watching right now in full. You can also receive for $84 a two DVD set, which includes Heart's Delight and A Place Out of Time, The Altona Flat Rock. Those are two brilliant documentaries. And of course, we also have available for $150, those two DVDs plus the book by Dr. Burke, William H. Minor, The Man and the Myth. When you make your call of support tonight, you're not just making a purchase of a DVD, it's not just buying a book, you're showing that you value and support what Mountain Lake PBS does to bring brings to this community every day. And remember, if you want to get information about how to become a sustaining member um, over time, you can certainly call and our volunteers on the line right now uh, from the Minor Institute can fill you in on those details. It's important to keep those volunteers busy because they are here waiting to take your call right now. So give us a call at the number on your screen or you can also go online to make your pledge there at mountainlake.org. Right now I'm going to toss it back over to Tom and the filmmaker Paul Frederick. All right, thanks a lot, Bill, and we so appreciate Rod Gilts being here with us today. And he talked about the premiere of this documentary at the Stan Strand Center in Plattsburgh back in August. And yeah, what a night. turnout, huh? <laughs> Sold out. I mean, it was uh, simply overwhelming to see that many people turn out on a very hot night uh, to watch the story of William Minor. And it just goes to show you how deep a connection he still has to people in this community. To see it on the big screen was amazing. To sit up in the top and hear all the people talking about all the connections oh, was what was amazing that night. And I'm sure you heard that from so many yeah. people that night. We did a little thing before the showing of that. I said, everyone raise your hand if you were, you know, if you worked at the farm or if you uh, worked at the school or went to the school in Chez or if you worked or went to CVPH, and right. by the time the last one, I think everyone in the theater had their hand up. So it's, it, his connection is just very deep and continues to this day. The theater is beautiful, the renovation's there. It was a packed house, 900 people. I don't think they've had uh, an event that's uh, come close to that. So yeah, for you as a filmmaker, that must have been uh, <laughs> quite a moment. It was fantastic, yeah. We had another showing and it was almost three quarters full for that. And uh, so yeah, I, I, I'm amazed and I'm pleased at how many people are actually interested in the William Miner story. All right, part three is coming up now. We're going to hear all about that million dollar dam. Yeah, this is amazing. <laughs> now back to Heart's Delight, the story of William H. Miner on Mountain Lake PBS.